In this video, we're going to be tackling the lead code question, longest repeating character replacement. So lead code, just as in life has phases. And we're at the phase right now where we're combining multiple data structures and multiple algorithmic patterns. This is when we really start building momentum. We're over the hard part and everything's gonna start going downhill from here, but in a good way. So with longest repeating character replacement, it's easiest to convey this with a story, a very relatable story. If you remember back to your childhood days, we didn't have cell phones, or at least I didn't. And we had to do all types of crazy things to not be bored in class. And one of those things is we used to draw these really crazy S's. And we also used to play really stupid games. I remember there was a game that I used to play in my notebook and in textbooks, don't tell on me, where we would mark out the letters and we would try to form the longest string of the same characters as we could. So if I had A, B, A, B, just like I have here, I would replace the B's with A's to try to get the longest string of A's as I could. And that's exactly what we're doing in this question. But leak code is going to give us a constraint, the K. The K is a variable that represents the number of replacements that we can replace. And in our example, our K is equal to two. That means we have two replacements. And that's exactly what we did. We replaced the two Bs with A's. And when we do that, our longest repeating character replacement all of these A's is equal to four. We don't want to return the actual substring. We just want to return the length. And here's the more important question. All of this is nice. You now understand what's going on. How exactly do we begin to build intuition for combining multiple algorithms? Well, we start off simple. Let's just start off and try to examine what exactly are we doing here when we count all of these A's. When you count something, and more specifically, when you're counting the number of something, what are you doing? You're calculating the frequency, and there's an algorithm pattern for that, a frequency counter. So what we'll do is we'll build a frequency counter that counts the number of A's and B's in all of the other characters that we come across. So what we're gonna do is we're going to iterate through every single character, every single letter within our string and substring. And for each character, what we're going to do is we're going to increment the frequency for the corresponding character in the array. Arrays are built off of index-based numbers, like zero, one, and two. They're not really based off of characters. So what we're gonna do is beforehand, before we do the actual insertion, we're going to convert that character over into ASCII. We're going to increment essentially the ASCII version of the A. So the ASCII version of the A is going to equal 97. So we're going to increment the 97th index. When we do that, we go ahead, we insert the one. We go ahead, increment to the next character, which is the same exact A. We've got an A again. We're going to increment to. Then we're going to do the same exact thing for the B, the ASCII version of the B equal to 98, so we increment our two Bs, one, two, so we'll increment the two Bs, then we do the same exact thing for the C, which in this case, 99, so we increment the two Cs at the end, C1, C2. Pretty easy, but here's the thing, how are we going to apply this to our actual algorithm? Well, we're gonna have to do this in multiple stages. And let's go ahead, let's just start off with the frequency counter and we'll worry about the more difficult stuff as we go along. So if we're just gonna use a frequency counter, we're gonna have to use two for loops, unfortunately. And with the nested for loop, our algorithm is going to be really simple. And it's going to be simple because with a nested for loop, it's just gonna go through every single possible substring. The outer for loop first is going to start and it's just going to iterate through every single possible character. And every single time the outer for loop moves up, that constitutes a new substring. So let's go ahead and let's just calculate our very first possible substring. 
So the for loop is going to start. The outer for loop is going to stay at the very first character. And we're just going to iterate through every single character. When we do that, we take the frequencies. So the number of A's is equal to two. The number of B's is equal to two. And we've gotten through the very first outer for loop and we've gotten our very first substring. But how do we check if the substring is actually what we want? If we can actually perform the longest repeating character replacement? What we'll do is we'll use a bit of very, and I mean very simple math. We have the current string length, the current substring that we just checked. And what we'll do is we'll just minus the maximum frequency. We'll take the maximum frequency which in this case is equal to two. And the string length here is equal to four. So four minus two is equal to two. And that two is the number of replacements that we can make. We also have the number of replacements that leak code wants. This is a constraint. We can't go over two. We can only perform two replacements. So if this number is greater, if the number of replacements is greater, that means no go. We can't do the replacements. But if it is less than two or equal to two, we can do the replacements. So four minus two is equal to two and our K is equal to two. We can definitely do the replacement. Here's the thing though. How exactly are we going to be able to do this in a linear time? Because currently this is quadratic. If we just performed just one substring, we're going to have to do a bunch of substrings. How can we do this so we can just, instead of having this nested for loop, we can do everything at one time, everything in one straight go. Enter the sliding window algorithm pattern. You see, previously with our nested for loop, we're calculating things in a pairwise fashion. We're calculating things over here. We're calculating things over there. We don't need to do any of that because we're wasting a lot of effort and we're also calculating overlapping substrings. What makes this problem great for a sliding window is that everything is a neighbor. What we're trying to search for is going to be in one single compacted substring. So we can kind of create a window, determine if it's what we want. And we're trying to find if we can do all of the replacements. And here's the thing with sliding windows. Regardless if we find if we can do the actual replacements, we're always going to be moving our window up. But if we find out that we can't do the replacement, and if you remember back to our math, if the number of replacements is greater than K, what we're going to do is we're going to shrink the window. So with that logic, let's walk through it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start off at the very first character. And before we do anything else, we're keeping track of frequency. So we need to keep track of the frequency for the A. The next thing that we need to do, we need to determine if we meet the requirements, whether we can do the replacements or not. How exactly do we do that? Well, we have the string length and we have the maximum frequency currently. We just check if it's greater than K and it's not greater than K. So before we do our next iteration, what we're going to do is we're going to store the length and the current length of the maximum longest character replacement is currently one. So next thing that we're gonna do, regardless, we're always going to be expanding our window. Increment our frequency, the current frequency of the character that we're at is going to be one. So we'll insert one into our frequency counter. Then what we're gonna do is, we're going to check if we meet the requirements. If the string length minus the maximum frequency is greater than K. So the string length is two, the maximum frequency is one, that's not greater than K. We'll go ahead and increment our length. So our current length is going to be two. Then what we're gonna do, exact same thing that we did before. The current frequency of A is now going to be two. We'll go ahead, check if we meet our requirements. Our requirements do not exceed K. So what we're going to do is we're going to increment our maximum length, which is now three. Then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to keep expanding. Our current frequency is now going to be two for B. Let's go ahead, check if we meet the requirements. We do meet the requirements. Our maximum length is going to be four. We have completed the algorithm. But here's the thing. This isn't a great example because there was nowhere that we had to shrink the window. Let's go ahead and let's just say for a crazy example, we, we added X to the end. 
So what's going to happen is, as always, regardless of what happens, the window is going to expand. And we're going to increment our frequency counter. We're going to go ahead and add X. We're going to increment the frequency so X appears one time in our frequency counter. Then what's going to happen is we're going to check our requirements. We're going to check our constraints. The string length is now 5. The maximum frequency is still 2. It's going to put us at 3, which is greater than K. It's not what we want. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to shrink the window. Shrinking the window is actually pretty easy. We just decrement the left. We'll talk about when we get into the code. Then what we have to do is we have to actually decrement the frequency of the A because we're removing the A from the window. And we calculate the max length. Max length is still the same. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead. Let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code this. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class. I'm going to call this solution. The solution class is going to house our method and this method is going to return an integer. Remember, we're just returning the length. We're not actually returning the string and we're going to call this character replacement. And IntelliJ went ahead and did our params for us. We're going to take in an, a string and we're also going to be taking in an integer which represents the constraint. So. Whenever you're creating a frequency counter, the general rule of thumb is that if you're working with just characters and substrings and strings, you want to use an array. And we're going to also create some state for our sliding window. So with sliding windows, you typically have a left or a right, but we're going to have a start and the end is going to be our for loop. We're going to create the end pointer within our for loop, which we'll do here in a second, but we're also going to keep track of the maximum frequency. And we're also going to be keeping track of the max length because these are going to be changing as we iterate through our for loop and do all of our iterations. We need to store them up at the top so that we can remember them. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our for loop. So you could create the indexes however you want to, but I'm going to create the index and I'm going to label it end because this is the end. This is what's going to iterate out in front and always iterate. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have it stop at the end of the string, obviously. And we're also going to increment it one by one. So we're always going to be moving forward. And as we're moving forward, one of the most important things that we have to do before we do anything else is we always have to be updating our frequency counter. We always have to update our frequency counter by taking the letter and updating the frequency in the corresponding ASCII number, which is going to be our index. And the way that we find the ASCII number is we minus it by the capital A character. Then what we do is we calculate the maximum frequency. We calculate the maximum frequency by, you guessed it, using math.max. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare it to the previous max frequency, and then we're going to be comparing it to the current char count. But this is incrementing. Notice here that we're actually incrementing this. We're adding. Right here, we're just grabbing it out. We're not actually increment. We're just pulling it out, and we're seeing if it's the max. And we're calculating the max frequency because now we're going to create the logic that's going to shrink the window when we don't have what we want. And we're going to use that max frequency we just created and we're going to compare it to K. So if the number of replacements, which is this right here, this is the string length, this is the max frequency. If the current string length minus the max frequency is greater than K, that means we can't do the replacements. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna shrink the window. There's two things that we have to do to shrink the window. Obviously, we have to go inside the frequency counter and we have to decrement the character that we're removing. Remember, when we shrink the window, what's going to happen is that we're going to leave out elements that we don't want. And if we're leaving elements out that we don't want, we want to remove them from the frequency counter. And once we remove it from the frequency counter, all that's left is just incrementing the start. And we're incrementing the start because we're moving it from the front to the back. Now that we've gotten the logic taken care of to shrink the window, only thing that's left now to do is just check the max length. And we're gonna just do that after every single iteration. And remember, use your plus one. These are indexes and we want the length. So remember here, you also want to do your plus one because these are indexes and we want to plus one this to convert it over into a length. 
finally almost forgot almost forgot this part my bad we're gonna have to return almost forgot the return that would have been pretty bad if i would have thrown that into lead code so what we're gonna do is let's go ahead throw this into lead code see what we get i gotta get out full screen mode here i'm gonna go ahead bring over the code editor so let's bring this over and we're going to go ahead toss that in there let's run our tests hopefully our tests work thank god make sure that our time complexity is good time complexity is n memory complexity is constant congratulations you have passed the interview hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching